to go through and fill out what an employer needs to do to pay those taxes. Okay? The government is not going to wait until December to collect all those payroll taxes. Does that make sense? Now, when you have a business that there's only one or two employees, there's not going to be a large amount of money. Now, let's think about the school district here. How many employees do we have here? A lot. Okay? Now, depending on the size of your business, your employer might have to pay monthly their payroll taxes because the volume of that money is so great and it's going to be a big liability to the business, or they could have to pay quarterly or annually. It depends on the size of the business. But depending on what it is, they're going to have to fill out this form. And, and how often does this form need to be filed? Try again. Look at the title. Four times a year. Do you see where it says quarterly? So that would mean every three months they have to go through and fill out this form. And they have to go through and assess what the taxes are that they owe because they have employees. Now let's think about these taxes. What are those taxes that we have to pay? Okay, federal income, Social Security, Medicare, and unemployment for the federal government. State unemployment is separate, but that's not going to be on a that'll be on a separate form because this is a federal tax return. Does that make sense? Now, think about it. We have two matching taxes. What are those two matching taxes? Medicare and Social Security. So we know if the employees in one quarter contributed three hundred and fifty dollars to Social Security, what did the employer have to contribute? Three, same amount, 350 So the total amount due for Social Security then would be $700. Does that make sense? So we're not doubling, but what we have to do is we have to realize those matching expenses for, for our Social Security and Medicare. So I have to have a little bit of our directions open because that's going to give us some facts about our business. But we are going to go through and fill out our um, tax form uh, for... Audio Solutions, and it gives us our information there. So our name um, is going to be Audio Solutions. The date that the quarter ends is going to be March 31st. Our employer identification number, that every business that has employees is going to have that information filled out. Our address is going to be 625 Sandpiper Street. Our city, state, and zip is going to be Oarsman Beach, Florida. Okay. Now, so at the very top, we're going to have to fill in that information. Then what we have to do is we have to use our numbers from here. And now, please take a moment, look up here, and let's talk about the numbers they gave us, because this sometimes is confusing. So we are doing this for March. So that means it has to do with our payroll for January, February, and March. Does that make sense? So we have January's total earnings, February's total earnings, and March's total earnings. We have our federal income tax withheld. We have our employee Social Security tax withheld and our employee Medicare. Why do they have to give that to us? Why can't we just take that and multiply as a percentage? Might be worth a piece of candy. I talked about it already. What's that? But we're only doing it for March. But why? Because right, we calculate Social Security and Medicare by a percentage. Six employees? Mm, nope. I talked about it already once. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Repeat the question. I can repeat the question. Now, for Social Security and Medicare, we calculate it by taking total earnings and multiplying it by a percent. Would you agree? Why did they give us those numbers there? Can't I just take that and multiply it? Couldn't I just give you the multiplication? Why did they give that to us? But they didn't have to in our directions. They could just say, whatever, Social Security and Medicare, but they did it for a specific reason. Well, yes, kind of nice, but more specific. 
it is nice because then we know we have that number. And we know this is the employee's portion. Remember, Social Security and Medicare are matching taxes. Whatever the employee puts in, the employer puts in. Okay, so we know that whatever the employees put in, we have to match that, but why did they give us the number instead of telling us to calculate it by the percentage? Besides that they're nice direction writing people. Am I going to get the piece of candy? Ooh. Ooh, let's see, I have Jolly Ranchers or Starburst. Okay, ready for it? You're going to be like, she said it earlier. Ready? Tax base. Oh! Right? Because not everyone has to pay Social Security and Medicare. If you exceed the tax base, it doesn't need to be deducted. And we don't know that on this information. That's why they give it to us. Does that make a little bit of sense? It is early on in the year. I'm assuming not everyone would have reached the tax base in January. But you never know. If you're Bill Gates, you'll max out right away. Right? Enjoy my Jolly Rancher later. So tax base is the reason. Okay, so they gave us this information. For each month, they gave us our federal income tax, which we cannot calculate because we have to go to our individual charts if you're married or single and you're withholding allowances. Now, the two taxes that we're missing are going to be our unemployment taxes. Would you agree? But unemployment taxes are going to be on a percentage. Would you agree? Now, is there anything fancy for unemployment taxes that we need to be aware of? Do they always pay it? Mm. Talk more. Hmm. But how? They still have to pay it because if they fire me. Correct. What is that number? Is it seven? Or is it eight? Is it 7000 Okay. I couldn't remember if it was 7 or 8. But there is a tax base on unemployment also, meaning once an employee earns more than $7,000, that employer no longer needs to pay unemployment taxes on them. So in January, February, and March, do you think that most employees will not have exceeded that tax base? Unless you're Bill Gates. Okay. Same thing. So that's why they have to give us that number, and they'll tell us whether or not we need to go through and they've exceeded our tax base. So using these numbers, we're going to go through and plug in some information. So we're going to have to, you are going to have to have your calculator open if you don't have it already. So number two, total wages, tips, and others compensation. See separate instructions. So what do I need to add here? These three numbers, my 10,440, 10,960, 12,400. Add up those three numbers, and that's going to go in box number two. And I see that uh, Dylan's a rock star over there. And what did you come up with? 33,800. And on this form, they actually have a drop-down list for you to choose. So it's kind of like cheating a little bit. You're like, oh, which one's close? Box number three, what are we calculating? Total income tax. So when I look at my directions, I'm adding up my federal income tax withheld. So I'm going to add 731. 767, 868, and then Cody, did you get that number already? What did you come up with, Cody? Okay, so we're going to type in 2,366. Now, number four, adjustment of withheld income tax for preceding quarters of this calendar year. In the directions, did they say anything about that? No, so we're going to put a zero in there. Number five, adjusted total of income tax. Line three is adjusted by line four. I hope you can do that math without a calculator. I know it is third hour on a Wednesday, but zero adjusted 2,366 is going to be 2,366. Now, taxable Social Security wages. Right here, I'm going to bump over on the, in the middle here for 6A. So what is our taxable earnings for Social Security? I'll give you a hint. We already calculated it. 33800 Would you agree? Now, I have not seen this percentage before. This is not the percentage that we use for Social Security. Talk to me. 
Nope. We have not seen this percentage before for Social Security. We have not used this number before. Why did they give that to us here? Might be worth candy. I've talked about it already. Tax base? Nope, not the tax base. Keep talking. You're on the right track. Yes, that's it. When we're going through and calculating our Social Security, it has to do with the fact that we have employer and employee portion. It's the um, one that there is matching taxes that's going to be deducted. So before, when we went through and did our payroll register, our number for Social Security did, was not that number. Okay? Because here, when we're reporting it to the federal government, we have to report what the employee's portion is and the employer's portion, which is why it's 12.4. So what you need to do right now is using your handy-dandy little calculator, you're going to take 33,800 and you're going to multiply it by 12.4. Notice they already calculated it as a percent for you, 0.124. Okay, so 0.124, if I multiply that across mathematically, what's the answer? <coughs> nice, 4,191.20. Thanks, Alexis. Now, do we have a business that deals with tips? No, Audio Solutions is not a restaurant that's going to be dealing with tips. So for 6C, we're going to have zero, and if you, zero multiplied by zero is going to give me zero. Okay, so 6C really deals with taxable Social Security tips, and we are only dealing with wages. Now, we're going to do the same thing for Medicare. We're going to take 33,800, and you will notice here that our Medicare percent is also not a percent that we deal with because this deals with the employees and the employer's portion. So we're going to take 33,800, multiply it by 0 .029, and then that should give us $980.20. So we just went through and calculated the employees and the employer's portion of Social Security and Medicare. So line number eight reads, total Social Security and Medicare taxes add 6B, 6D, and 7B. Handy dandy calculator, add up those three numbers. Abby, did you get a number? $5,171.40? I agree. Thank you. Okay. So we take a look at nine, adjustment of Social Security Medicare taxes based on sick pay, sick pay and fractions of cents. Do we have any information about that? No. Nothing in our direction, so we're going to put in a zero. So number 10, adjusted total of Social Security and Medicare tax, eight adjusted by nine. Well, okay, well, that is going to be your 5,171.40. Line number 11, total taxes, add five and ten. Keep saying it, Jordan. What did you get? I agree. So our Social Security, our Medicare, and our federal income tax, when I add up those three taxes, gives me 7537.40. Now, line number 12, your Advanced Earned Income Credit, or EIC. Any instructions on that? Did they give us anything about EIC payments? Zero. Now, number 13, Net taxes, subtract 12 from 11. Hope you don't need your calculator. Number 14, total deposits for the quarter, including overpayment applied from prior, previous quarter. So the total amount that we are paying is at 7537.40. Balance due is going to be zero. Now, we went through and calculated. Now, one of the things we always know in accounting class and the federal government is there's going to give us a way for us to prove. Does that make sense? So down here on the very bottom, there's this table. And this is usually the part that students go, huh? What we need to do is for the first month, we have to come up with the total liabilities. So now tell me, what are our taxes that I'm reporting on here? Federal income tax, 
Social Security, Medicare, right? We're not doing, we haven't talked anything about employment yet. So we've talked about these three taxes, federal, Social Security, and Medicare. Who pays Social Security? Employee and employer, it's matching. Who pays Medicare? Employee and employer. I'm saying it over and over again because I want you to realize that. So what I need to do, oh, good Lord, my mouse is freaking out. For the first month, I need to add up my taxes that I, I have owed. So I owe my federal income tax, which is 731. What else do I have to add? Social Security, but what does this title say? Employee. So I'm going to take 731 plus 647.28 plus 647.28. Why am I adding it twice? Whatever the employees pay, the employer has to pay. Does that make sense? So I'm going to take this number plus this number plus this number plus this number plus this number. I have to put in twice your Social Security and Medicare because one is the employer and one is the employee. Does that make sense? So I have to add up five numbers. Federal income tax, Social Security, Social Security, Medicare, Medicare. Because I've talked several times about how we have matching expenses. So go through and add up those five numbers for January. Then you have to add up those five numbers for February. And then you have to add up those five numbers for March. This is the part that people get wrong. This is the hard part of the form. So go through and do that. I'm going to wait to the end, and I'm not going to give you numbers right away. So accounting one, when we take a look at your first month's liability, it should be $2,328.32. Your second month's liability should be your $2,443.88. Third month should be two seven sixty five twenty, And then you add up your three numbers here, and guess what it should equal? This number there. Does that make sense? That's how you get to double check. The federal government wants to know what it is for each month also, so they can go through and check. Uh, track your payments, but you will find that this total liability for this quarter needs to equal line number 14 from up above. And when we do our math, if we've done it correctly, it should match. Now, down here below, we have to sign your student name. Um, your title is going to be student name and manager, and then we're going to have the date is going to be that this is going to be filed on is going to be the 24th, and that was given to us in the directions as well. Um, this business is set up as a monthly scheduled depositor, and that information is given to you within this Section 13.3. It talks about based on how much money is collected, whether or not they pay monthly or they pay quarterly. And it did tell us that in the directions, it did not. We have to know it based on the amount of pay, so we have to put a check mark right here that they are a monthly scheduled depositor. Some businesses have to do a semi-weekly scheduled depositor. Then you should check answer, and you should be good to go on that one. I missed something. Oh, number of employees. I missed that instruction number one because it was indented in. Sorry about that. Instruction number one, they want the number of employees. Then you should be good to go. Go ahead and try the on your own. The on your own? I have it. I will work on that just in a minute. Hang on one second. I have to help on some other kids too. 